it says we are live. So we are going to wait a little bit and let some people get on. Hopefully everyone can find me. Hey, Jackie. All right, so that means I am live. Awesome, how are you? <laughs> hey, Stephen, you haven't been here in a while. Okay, so we'll give it a few minutes. So um, be sure and type in the chat, say hello, tell me where you're from, and you'll get a chance to win, hey, Marianne, a prize tonight. We have three different giveaways this evening. <laughs> we, we missed you too, Stephen. <laughs> How cute. All right, so tonight we're going to do a fall sun catcher. It is a five by seven piece, or five by six, excuse me, piece of glass. Hey, Melissa, Vicki, hello, Chris. All right, we got a few people coming on. So, hi there, everyone. I am Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. We have glass enamels, we have ceramic products, and we have brushes, call a brush company. So tonight I'm going to be doing this fall sun catcher and I've started part of it, but I'm going to explain what I've done. I tried to get it in a little bit of a different stage so that you could see different things uh, along the way. Okay. So Jackie is from on Alaska, Texas. I always thought that was a strange name. I'm like, you're from Alaska? No, she's north of Houston. Anyway. All right. So we've got quite a few people on. I'm going to switch to my overhead camera and get started. Right. You do have, okay, you can hear me now? Okay. That's weird. Okay, make sure you can hear me now. I've had to switch. Okay, all right. All right, guys, so what I've got here is this fall project. This is just a little sun catcher um, that has a wire. And like I said, it's a four by six. The instructions are two pages plus a pattern. And that is on the blog page. And let me stick that up there real quick. So if you're on YouTube, you can follow that link. Jenny is going to put the link in the comments. So it has two pages of instructions plus the pattern. And then the video will be below that once the video is completed tonight. So you can find everything for that project in one spot. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hide that. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Oop, maybe too much. Sorry. All right, so what I did was I took our black outline, GO331, and I put, so it comes with a regular cap like this. And then with our, okay, it should change in just a second. Hold on, guys. Did it switch? Because I see only one screen. Okay, so I'm going to, we're trying to get rid of the other, for whatever reason, my controls are not working. Hold on, guys. So what I did was I took the um, black outline. Can you see the outline bottle if I put it over to this side, Jenny? Okay. And do you still have a split screen or just all my overhead? I see and it's not up there. That's wild. Okay. I'm going to delete all those out and not even do them. I'll just let you put them in the chat. Okay. And maybe I can get rid of all that. Okay, guys, I'm trying to make sure this is a complete screen where you can see both of my pieces here. And is it still not showing? Okay, let me go back. Hold on. I had problems a minute ago and now I'm having them again. 
it, it's like it's not wanting me to do anything. Show I can't even show myself. Hide. It's like I'm stalled. I don't know if I refresh, it's going to screw it up or not. I'm going to refresh. Okay, let's see what happens. So you might chat, put it in the chat just in case. Changes made may not be saved. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what is going on tonight. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm going to start over. <laughs> All right, so what I did was I took the outline black, and like I said, it comes in a bottle like this with a regular cap. We have the cap kit accessories, or if you buy the outline black and white um, kit, it comes with the red caps. And it comes with tips and the closures. Uh, Jenny will put the link to the outline product in the chat. Okay, so you take off that cap and just put the black bent tip on. And then what I'm going to do is just show you on this other piece. The reason the tip is bent is so that you can touch to the glass. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that well. Okay, hold on. All right. So you're physically touching the glass, okay? You're scraping along the glass. You're not gonna hurt the glass, it heals in the firing. So what I did was I came in, whoops, I got some water there. Test your tip to make sure there's no water in it because I did not test it, make sure it's flowing. And then you would just basically trace over all of those lines until you have them all in. If you end up with a thicker line that you don't like, you can always wipe it off completely, or you can wait till it dries and you can scratch it off with a toothpick, okay? So what I've done is outline the entire piece with the black outline. And I'm gonna zoom back out so you can see that. All right, so I've outlined everything. I used scotch tape, attached it to my pattern, and outlined. When you take the tip off, you can either put the original cap, the white cap back on, or you've got that little cap closure. You can put it on there if you just want to leave that. You also get a plunger. You need to pull some water up into the plunger, attach the tip, and then flush it. I'm not going to show you my water, but I'm flushing it back and forth to make sure that that is completely clean and free. These, all of our tips, we have four different sizes. All of them are stainless steel. You can drop them in water and clean them later. You don't have to do it right away. They will not rust, okay? Always just check after you clean to make sure that water is not still in there if you get ready to outline again, all right? So I'm gonna wipe this off of here. I did that beforehand just so you guys didn't have to sit and watch me do that. Um, when you're making when you're going into like a curve for like these tendrils, and let me zoom back in just a smidge so you can see better. So when you're doing the curves, it's a good idea. I'm gonna just use my little pointer here. So you do a line straight and come up and stop and then come down. So in other words, if you're making a circle, you wanna do a half and a half. If you go completely around, you're actually um, going backwards on the tip and then you end up take scratching off what you're putting on okay so do a half and a half when you have any type of circle or curl so i came down and i stopped and i came down and i stopped and then i finished over here okay so that's a good rule of thumb so then what you want to do okay let me zoom back out all right, so always have a toothpick handy in case you need to scratch something off. So if you've got a larger little tip on there, you can just take and scratch that off. 
and you fix any errors. You know, if you've got something that you don't like, uh, you could take an X-Acto blade, would do the same thing. Okay. All right. So what I've done is flood in this large leaf here with the um, Laurel Green 362 and all the colors. Oh, what I need to tell you is all these colors that I'm using tonight are in the fall kit with the exception of the outline and the detailing black. So let me put those here where you can see them all. So all of these come in that fall kit. And Jenny, if you want to uh, put that kit up in the chat. All right, so these are the colors that come in that kit. So you get two bubble arts and then you've got a seven regular colors. You get some pods. You just need to um, purchase the brush. And the brushes are class brush, which is the 455 dash zero or the one works really well. We have uh, three or four different sizes of it, but that's the one that I like. Okay. So that way, you, these are good colors for fall. We have a spring kit. We've got a winter kit. Um, and what else? Anyway, there's four different seasonal kits. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move these back out of the way. That way you can see all of those. And they're all listed. Um, if you click on the fall kit, you'll find all those colors. All right. So the pumpkin is just orange. This is a real simple uh, Shelly Long did this for me whenever we were just starting when we made the kits. Uh, she came up with this one. I had her do. She's got three of the four seasons that we've got. So I'm going to use the 318. I'm just going to flood it in solid. Now there's this is pure basic glass enameling. Okay. There's not a whole, there's a two color blend that I did on that yellow and green leaf. But do you see how much is on my brush? It's really thick. I'm wondering if I should show this side camera. I'm afraid to. <laughs> I'm afraid that it'll... I'm going to zoom back in. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in just a little bit so you can see that a little better. Okay, so I'm scooping up, and you can see there's like almost like a drip on there, and I'm flooding it in, and I'm leaning the brush back so you can see what I'm doing, but normally you would be over the top and just let the color fall off. And I'll go over the mixing in a minute. I just went ahead and mixed these all up just because I wanted to have them done and not uh, waste any time with that. So the enamels are dry. And then we mix them with our glass medium, the GM 300, which comes in that kit. A small bottle like this, a two ounce bottle. Um, I recommend that you get you a larger one because that's not enough to uh, mix up all the colors that you have in that kit. So always start in a large area and then move towards your smaller area or your lines. So I'm pushing and pulling, flooding on to fill that in. Okay. Now you could do two color blends with this, but like I said, this is just a bare bones basic, um, you know, even kids could do it. Not a whole lot of uh, detailed instruction. Okay, do we have any questions, Jenny, yet? Okay, no questions, but Den Larson said he was working with his enamels today and having a good time. Oh, my son's on. Hi, Kyle. Tell your wife happy birthday. It's her birthday today my daughter-in-law, that piece that I posted uh, the other day, the pink and purple Murini piece, uh, she got that for her birthday a few years ago. So, all right, so it's just a basic flood and fill, drop and uh, puddle, push. So I started in the large and you go out to the outside, okay? And that was 318 pumpkin. Okay, so that's your basic. And then that I did the same thing on these two leaves here. I use the six or 362 laurel green, which is the darkest green, and I just flooded those in solid. That way I can do some detailing on top of that so you can see it. Now, these two leaves here um, are three colors. We're going to put the 
base color in for most of it. When you're mixing the enamels, let's go over that real quick, and you've got it mixed up with the medium, you want to make sure you clean that tool off and then to check the consistency, I'm going to tilt this a little bit. I'm going to dip it in real quick and lift it out. It should drop by the count of three for the most. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, drip by two. So we're good. Always clean off that tool. And these are our tools that we sell on the website. Just search for a tool, spatula. It's got a tapered end and a, a flat end. I use the flat end to put my powders into my jars. And then I usually stir with my tapered end so I can do that uh, drip test. So I mixed these up a little bit ago, but I'm going to go ahead and just remix because they do start to separate. And once you get familiar, you can kind of know how much medium to how much um, dry powder you need. Okay, so this one still has dry powder in it. I'm not sure that you can see that yet. There you can. So I'm going to add some medium to it. When you're brand new, just mix one or two drops at a time till you get familiar with how much you need. Okay, see that's really thick. It's like barely dripping off of there. So I'm going to add four more drops and mix. As the color sets and not and it's not being used, it will separate. So you do have to remix one, two, three. It dripped by three. So I am good to go. All right. So we need to, these are tiny leaves. I'm going to put this like up here at the top. And I think you can still see that. Okay. So I'm grabbing my brush. I'm going to put this like at the base and like for the center area and then kind of bring some fingers. So I'm just skimming the top. I'm not going all the way down to the glass. So I'm not pushing all the way down like this and brushing. I am literally just up on the top and I'm just moving that color around. The bristles are not bending. That's the key. If you start bending the brush, then you're going to get very thin application. It's not going to be solid and it's not going to be opaque. Okay, so, and when you do a two color blend like this, you want to make sure you do all your colors at one time while it's wet on wet before you move to the next one. Don't try to do the same on this leaf and think you're going to get it done before it dries because that outer edge is so thin that it starts drying and turns powdery. So you want to make sure. So I just wipe off on the top of my jar to remove the excess. And then I'm going to grab into, um, this is the vi new bright violet. And I'm going to add it. Okay, so I need to make sure I'm telling you my colors. Jenny says, okay, so this is new bright violet. This one is teal. And I'll just put the caps over here. I like to put the caps under when I'm working because then I get the right caps back on and I don't have to think about it. Uh, so this one is the, the bright violet 37, 337. And then you can kind of shimmy that, meaning move the brush back and forth to kind of blend it on that edge. If you, I'm going to wipe the brush on a paper towel because I'm going to grab the deep cranberry. And I'm going to add it to the other side. Now, remember, these may not be the ideal colors for the leaf. We were just trying to come up with a project for all the colors in this kit. And this is what we came up with. Just showing you how, yes, you can use what's in there and accomplish a nice project. So just shimmy that back and forth and work it in. And you just keep working it till you like, if you want to, you can go back and grab some of the teal and I can take that. I'm going to lean back so you can see, I'm going to take that teal and maybe I run some fingers. I blotted my brush and if I want it to come up and maybe come out, just remember as you're dragging across the top of all those colors, the brush is going to pick up everything. So you may want to wipe the brush off occasionally if you don't want to transfer that color back and forth in there. Okay, so let me move that a little bit closer. 
So you can see that it's opaque, but down at the bottom, I can see glass coming through because I'm not working on a light board. So I need more of the burgundy and I need to kind of fill in a little bit closer to that outline. If I go over the outline, it's okay. I like to go back at the end and touch up with the, um, I listed the DB101, CC101 is the same product, just labeled differently. And I go back and make it nice and bright because this outline black is a matte finish. You can kind of see that it's a gray color and it, because it's already a uh, liquid, it's nothing you mix up. So it comes as a liquid. So it tends to have a little bit of a gray tone to it and it does have a matte finish. You cannot cap on top of outline black. I want to make sure you know that you have to fire it first and then you can come back and cap. It will actually make bubbles if you try to cap over the top of it. Now, I have been successful to sift over the top, and that way any bubbles or anything can get out through that, and that works. Now, I would not wanna do this other leaf that's gonna be the same color right next to that one, because if I happen to go over my black line, then those leaves are gonna merge, and I don't have no separation, okay? So I'm just gonna put my lids on there, and let those set for a minute while I do another leaf. So now I'm going to use uh, 324 yellow ochre. And I'm going to use the 362 laurel green. Again, I'm going to check my consistency. And like I said, Ed, the more you do, you'll get familiar that they are mixed or they're not. And the 362 laurel. Do we have any questions, Jenny? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question uh, Jean has asked, is it a powder that you mix with the medium? That is correct. So let me just mix up a little bit more of the 324. So they come in uh, 25, 28 grams or one ounce. They come in two ounce and they come in eight ounce, or let me repeat, one ounce, two ounce, four ounce, and pints. So it is a powder, very, very fine powder. It does have glass in it, so you need to be careful. Um, if you airbrush with these, you need to wear a mask. If you're um, more asthmatic or borderline, I would wear a mask even until you get it mixed. So what I did was add the glass medium, GM300, and I'm going to mix it with my tool. Okay, so that. Okay, so the next question she asked was, how long will this last after it's mixed up? Yeah, if, even if it dries up, Jean, you can still reconstitute it with by just adding the medium and remixing. Uh, so you won't lose it. Now, if you're not going, I, I would try to mix up only what you need. Okay, first of all, um, if you leave it in there over four to six months and you start scraping the end, these are plastic, glass jars are the best because you don't have to worry about this because of all the plastic being recycled these days um, when you're taking the tool and you're scratching the outside sometimes that can deposit into your color so you have to be very careful about that um, every so often i change my jars out it just depends on how much you mix them if you're using everything daily then all you're gonna it's gonna just separate where you see the liquid on the top the color get falls to the bottom okay so they should last. I mean, I have uh, some that I've painted with, like we did something here, what, three or four weeks ago uh, that's vermilion. And you can see that it's still damp in there, but it's not, let me clean my tool off and I'll show you. So it's kind of, you see how it is? It's damp, but it's not mixed up. So what you would do is just add you a skim on the top and start mixing and then just add a little bit more mix again make sure you push it against the side to get all those granules worked up so you don't have a lump so as a beginner just if you haven't done it in a while just start with just a little bit of medium and then just keep adding so now it's see it's still thick I like peanut butter so we're gonna add three or four more drops and 
then it'll be ready to go. It's still thick, it's not dropping. So one, two, three, four. So hopefully that explains that. Okay, so yes, you can reconstitute. Just if it's been sitting there a long, long time, um, I caution you. One of the things that you might see um, as you're painting with one that you reconstitute it, if you see any what I call little floaters, they almost look like a little tiny speck of clear frit. Um, if you see that, more than likely it's plastic that you've scraped off the edge and it will cause some pullbacks because it's going to burn out in the kiln and it's going to cause a, an issue. Okay. All right. So the uh, yellow, oh, we have a question. Yes. There is little, okay. So she's asking, do the, these little half ounce jars come in the kit? No, they don't, but there is a pod, you know, and I don't have one back here. Uh, those flip top pods that you see in the kids it comes with those to get started these we sell like a dozen of the half ounce jars you can just search for half ounce on the website and find these um, the glass ones are so expensive that it's just it's hard to carry those and their weight as far as shipping and everything okay so on these smaller leaves i'm going to add the yellow ochre and again i'm starting in a large area and i'm pulling down just a little bit on the side. I'm going to wipe off that excess. I'm going straight into the green. I'm not going to contaminate it just by touching in there real quick. If you see any color in there, you can always pull it out. Okay, so I've got the two colors on. And once again, you can shimmy it back and forth on the surface to blend that color in. You can wipe off your brush, grab some yellow. Let's say I wanted a line coming in and one in here. So you can just go back and forth until you get it like you want. So Jean, hopefully that answered your question. Okay. And then we just move to the next one and do the same. So this is the basic and in all of the uh, regular kits, whether it be a seasonal or the beginner, all of those are the G series. So this starts with a G and a number. All the glass colors are 300s. Those are all food safe. Now this black outline isn't because it's a matte finish. But like I said, you can fire it once and then come back and sift over it or cap it. The um, You get two BA colors, B for bubble art in this kit also. Bubble art needs to be capped to make bubbles. If it's on the top surface, it leaves a texture, which would not be food safe. But let me show you. So you can kind of see it's got bubbles in it and there's some here. Those are going to be done on the back side of this glass. I'm going to demonstrate on another piece. But for this particular project, everything is painted on the top or the bottom of the one piece. And we just use a second piece to fuse underneath it to get our six millimeters. Okay. Okay, so the question is now, does the outline product come off if you get close to it? No, it doesn't come off. It will get damp, okay? And um, if you go over it, you'll just have to touch it up. And I'll show you some of that uh, on these green leaves. I'm going to detail those so that you can see how to use the detailing black on top. So two different products. You can even see that this one's darker and this one's more gray. So don't cap the outline. CCs you can cap, but you can sift over this and get away with it if you're trying to get it done in one firing. So hopefully that answered the question. And okay, we got two more questions. Can this product and technique be used on ceramics? Um, technically, if it was a flat surface and it was a pre-glazed surface, you could, although I have another video out there where you add layering mix as opposed to the glass medium, and you're actually able to do brush strokes on ceramics with it. And I like to do it on top of a matte glaze. Um, so who asked that one? 
Jean. Okay, Jean is busy tonight. Um, can you, I'm going to ask Jenny to go find the video. It's got the purple flowers. It says layering mix and enamels on the YouTube. And she can drop a link to that project. And that will show you a, another. So I did two of these at one time because they're so tiny. So tiny. Okay, so I'm just, we have another question. Okay. This black, so they're asking, once you fire the black, is it food safe? No, it is still a matte surface. So technically food particles could adhere to that, you know, like liquids, that kind of thing. So what I would do is sift over it. Or if you wanted just to fire one piece, you could do that and then come back and put your bubble art on the back side. And that way you could sift over it the second firing. But in the first firing, no, it is not food safe and you cannot cap it. You can sift over it, okay? You can sift over it and get away with it with powdered frit. Okay, any other questions? We're caught up. All right. Yay. All right. Good questions, guys. Keeping me on my toes. And I am, there's something in the air. I guess that rain we got, I'm stuffy tonight. Okay, so all of the enamels that start with the G are food safe. If they're GTs, meaning glass toxic is what the, uh, the G and the T means. So G is food safe. And then we have the BAs, which is bubble art. So these make bubbles. They are generally uh, between the glass Unless sometimes if I want to make snow or something, I will um, use them for the top surface. All right, I'm going to jump over here and do this one real quick and put a little bit of yellow on it. These are so tiny. You guys are asking good questions. So you can just shimmy it back and forth and kind of create whatever look um, you want. Uh, and maybe you just want them one color. You can do that. So this is like a turn back. And we, if, did you notice that I did not transfer? I think you can see. I did not transfer all of the veins. We're going to put that on top. Yay. Because otherwise, can you imagine trying to go around each one of those? That would be a pain. And it would just make you absolutely crazy. So if, and I brought this out. So if you were to apply the colors without any outline, that's what you're looking at, which is absolutely fine. So it's up to you, but you can come back. So that was applied the same way. And then I just added the detailing black on top of it. So there are different ways to get different looks. Okay. All right, so let's do this uh, leaf over here. And I'm going to put the yellow on the bottom as if it's turned. Wipe off the excess, go directly into the laurel. 362 and add it. And just kind of shimmy a little bit. You just want to make sure if the color flows together, then it's the right consistency. If it just stays where it's at, then it's probably too thick. But once you get both colors on there, everything should merge or come together uh, nice and freely. That way you know you've got the right consistency. All right, we got one more leaf up here that has the yellow. Okay. Don't move my hands so fast. She said I was fuzzy. I feel fuzzy today. <laughs> okay, so Talisa wants to know if the frit that you sift over comes with the kit. No, we don't sell frit. So it is not in the kit. Um, you would have to purchase that from a glass studio or there's all different types of online places, um, AAE, Delphi, Slumpies, 
uh, Hollander, DNL, there's all the types of, and a lot of those places carry our um, products, DNL, AAE. So if you're ordering from them, you might as well order your color at the same time. That, okay, we got lots of questions, Jenny says, so I need to. Okay, so several people don't understand about sifting the fritz. So the black outline is not food safe. In order to make after it's been fired or I can sift. So instead of putting another piece of glass, let me grab one. I have another set here. So instead of setting another piece of glass over this and fusing it, our piece is going to be underneath it. Okay, this piece is going to be underneath it. You can also take powdered frit, and it's very fine. And you would take an enamel sifter. And hold on, I don't have the frit here, but here's an enamel sifter. It has the fine uh, screen on the bottom. So you put your powdered frit in there, and then you would, okay put the powdered frit in there and then I like to just tap it and you sift on just a nice thin coating. Uh, let me, I might have a picture on my phone that I could show you, uh, but I'm not sure that I can find it really quickly. So powdered frit is similar to the consistency of the powdered enamels. You see how fine that is? Very, very fine. Like fine, like flour fine. Okay, like cooking flour. It's fine like that. So you sift over it. What that does, it looks white when it goes on, but it will be clear. And that basically cap, it's called capping. You're sifting or you're putting it over it. And then it fires clear and shiny when it comes out. So... Let me see if I can find another piece up here. Okay, so it'd be like if you had where you're sifting over the top of this and then it when it fires, it'll be shiny like this. Hopefully that helps. Next question. Okay. Oh, my little one. This is, um, they're asking if I cap this. I did not because I put white behind it. Our colors look really great with a white background. You'll find that a lot of times I use white and I paint on the clear. Um, this is vermilion red, which is 310, the one that I was mixing up a little bit ago, and white. And I just flooded on not anything next to each other because I don't want them to merge. Okay flooded on the red, and then I put a little bit of white, and then I just pulled the lines of white out to look like the uh, stamens or gathering of the flower in the center there. Okay, next question. Okay. Can you put the black outline on top of the enamels? Yes, you could, but think about this. If you've got the tip on, if you're applying with the tip, you're going to scratch off your enamels. Could you put it on with a brush? Yes, but I guarantee you, if you thin that down enough to put on top, it's going to be almost washed out. So it's not anything I would recommend. I usually do, I usually do the CC 101 and or the DB 101 on top. Okay. Hey, Miss Vicki Fletcher. Okay, the question is, always use the medium and not water. Correct. Now, can you use water? There are different techniques. I did a watercolor background. It has a toucan. It's on the YouTube channel also. Um, the medium will retain the color. You start adding water and you start diluting your color. So the value goes down. It's very transparent. So can you use water? Yes, but why would you? Unless it's a technique specific. The medium will help the color stay strong. Okay. 
Next question. Okay. Does the black and the color have to be wet in order for you to sift over it? No, Jean. You would want everything completely dry before you sift. Because think about it this way, you start, it'd be like taking a salt shaker and putting little tiny granules on top of that. Well, it diffuses it. Okay, frit is, the clear frit is clear. When you put it on and it's wet, then it's going to attach itself to the color. And then as it starts melting, it's going to push out that color. So you want it completely dry before you sift over. Good question though. Okay. Any more? We're caught up. Okay. Woo, you guys are working me tonight. Great questions. Absolutely. They are. Okay. I'm going to go back and do this other leaf real quick with our three colors that we had up here, our teal, bright violet. So just as you're working, just double check that they haven't started to separate, which it's not been long enough. But even after 30 minutes, the colors could separate. So keep that in mind. Just don't grab and go. You want to definitely check your consistency. Or they just thicken up a little bit. And you need to have them uh, to the proper consistency so that they merge into each other. And you don't get, if they're just, if they sit in a pile, then it's not the right consistency. They need to flow together. Remember I said if you put two pieces two colors together, they need to flow into each other and merge into one. All right, so I'm adding the bright violet on the edge. Thanks for joining us, Miss Vicki. Is Karen on tonight from uh, New Zealand also? We've got different countries on. I don't know what time. I think they're, what, eight hours difference, I think. Now, naturally, I would, uh, normally, I would work on a light board so that I could see if I had any gaps between that outline and my color. Okay, but um, I did not put that underneath me tonight. I'll just hold it up and show you. So I'm just grabbing, like I said, these are just the colors that are in that fall kit. That's why I'm using these particular colors. It's not necessarily some that I would pick on a regular basis, but we were just trying to make sure that you had some type of project. You could see them fired. So just shimmy back and forth on the top surface. You can wipe your brush, go back into the teal if you want, and you can drag that if you want more of a point. Just remember, Whatever you put on there and drag through, it's going to pick it up on the brush. So you may have to keep wiping your brush on a paper towel or a sponge. Okay. All right. So I think you can see around the edge of the pumpkin, it looks a little chalky there. So that's starting to dry. And then the center is wet, wet. Now, another thing that you can do while the color is wet, you could sift like some of our sparkles over the top of it. That's a really cool look. Um, you can even uh, put chunks. You were talking about frit. If I wanted, uh, like our red is not red, red, unless you go to the one that's toxic. So I have taken, and I've talked about this before, taken red frit while my vermilion red, which is more of a brown red, is wet and I've put chunks of fine and medium red frit on top of it and I got a redder look. There's a project that's a flag, the stripes of a flag. Um, I did that on and I just dropped my lid. Yes. Well, so, Den, no, I would not. Uh, can you? Yes, but I wouldn't because he's asking about putting the black outline he didn't hear me so i would not because if you're especially if you're trying to do it with the tip on it you're going to scrape off your color if you're doing it with the brush it's going to be so thinned out that it's just not gonna have much color to it so i would not i would use the cc or the db 101 to do that okay all right so all of those areas are in and so what i'm going to show you now 
is um, the black on top of these leaves. That way you can see what that looks like. And that's what I've done here on this little guy. Let me get him where he's not got a glare on him. So it's got black around the outside of those petals. Okay. So always shake the color concentrates to make sure they're liquefied. And then I'm just going to put a tiny drop out. And then I'm going to get my liner. This particular liner I like to do is the 3600 number two. And we have this in three different sizes. Always wet your brush. It is a sable or Kalinsky. And I've got enough water in my brush that I can thin this black out a little bit. So it's not just straight from the bottle. And I'm coating the hairs by pulling it through. It's kind of like shampooing the brush with the color, like your hair on your head. You got to get that shampoo in there. So work it in there. Make sure that you don't have any water drops on your brush that's going to fall down and cause a pool or a puddle. Okay. And then let's do this little one here. So I'm going to start where the center vein and I'm just barely touching and then I can pull out on top of that. And just don't stick your hand in your wet. So I would wait till everything's completely dry usually. Okay. I think that's that's close enough, isn't it, Jenny? They can see that. Okay. All right. So this one up here. Here's your stem here. Coming up. So you can see the difference in the color itself from the outline. If you look at those real close, and I'll zoom in in just a second so you can see that. Okay, Jenny says it's visible. So you can see that it's a really nice black compared to the gray of the outline. So like that one, I just had color. I didn't have any outline, and I just chose to come along and outline it a little bit on top. Now, when you go back at the end, I would literally go back over and I would kind of touch up the outline and everything because I want it nice and dark. And I kind of missed, I went over my line with my color there. Now, when you do that, it, it does ha have a different look. You can see that's darker than that. So if you're going to touch up your outline, you need to be consistent throughout the whole project. So you need to do it on everything. Okay. You need to um, be consistent and do it on multiple ones. Don't just touch up like this and have the rest of that all the other color because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So even if you don't, let's go back over here. I'm trying to turn slow so it doesn't get fuzzy. So on this one, I would need to come back in here and I would need to add some of this to that one also. And even if it's not everything, it could just be, you know, a hit and miss. That's fine too. But that way your eye doesn't go to one thing. It's more consistent throughout. Okay. Any questions, Jenny? No questions. Whew. Okay, one second, and I'll do that close-up that you're asking about. So here again, I'm just going in here and making my veining. You know, it's hard to turn slow when you're used to just turning. And I'm starting to skip a little, so I'm going to add a touch more water to my black and thin that out a little bit more so that it makes it flow a little freer. I'm kind of shaky tonight. All right, so she wants a close-up of this one. And there is a YouTube on this. It actually shows um, the red one and this one on the preview of it. It's just talking about basic enamel mixing. And I believe it was a Facebook Live. 
So it is out there if you want to know. I mean, colors and everything will be on that video. All right. Okay, so that's how I used the detailing black or the CC black. You could use any color concentrate. CC stands for color concentrates. These are a ceramic underglaze from our ceramic side of the business, but we found that we can paint on glass with them and we can shade on top of the enamels and do all different types of things. And there's like five or six videos. There are playlists on the website and Jenny might link that for you. So if you go to the education tab and then you go to the um, video tutorials, you will see um, all of the different, and if I show that, maybe I uh, hopefully I can get rid of it. Hopefully this doesn't mess things up. So on the video tutorial page, you'll see this screen. And if you click on any of those buttons, the enamels, the ceramics, the CCs on glass, it will take you to a playlist on YouTube that has multiple videos for those different products or techniques. Okay. Hey, it worked. Woohoo. All right. So let's, <laughs> it didn't stall on me. Yay. <laughs> That's just what I need. Okay. So this brown. I'm going to mix it because it's been setting there and it's pretty thick. So I'm going to add a couple of drops. We're going to add this to the stem of the pumpkin. Three drops. Mix it up. I'm using the tapered end. Wipe off the tool. Dip one, two, three. We're good to go. Excuse me. All right. Any other questions, Jenny? Okay, so you can just come in and flood that in. So the pattern and the detailed instructions are available for this project on the blog page. It says fall class sampler, I think is what I called it. Okay, and she's going to add that link into the chat so you can see that um, and even click on it, have it there in your browser. And then um, the kit. Like I said, it has all the colors. I can see, let me see if I can show you this. I don't know whether it'll show up or not. If you look at the pumpkin right by the stem, right, it's hard to see. There's a little bit of a background showing there. There's an open hole. So I'm going to go back and touch that up real quick. It's hard to see on camera, but that's, so if you're at home and you don't have a light board, so I just added it and stopped, you can hold it up and up to the light and then look underneath it. Of course, I can't show you that because you don't want to see my face, but you would hold it up and just look underneath it and make sure everything. I'm going to flip this really quick to the back side so that you can see. Okay, so you can see how. Okay, I had to flip it back over because I don't want that to run. Okay, so she's asking about the drip test. So clean off the tool, because if you have a whole bunch of product on there, it's not going to work. I'm going to tilt this to the side. I'm going to dip in real quickly, lift it out, and start counting. Ready? One, two, three. It dripped by the count of two. So I'm good. So it needs, before you count, like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, it should be dripping. If it isn't, add another drop of medium, stir it, test it again. Just always make sure you wipe off that tool because you're going to get a false test if you don't. It's not going to drip the same if it's got a whole bunch of product on it. Okay. So this is uh, 332 Deep Cranberry. And this color is going on the other corner up here. I'm going to just turn this so that it's closer to me. And the reason uh, we put those on the corner is because it is going to cover up where our wire is. Okay, so we can bend this. Okay, so see that's going to be underneath this. And I have it. Okay. That way you've got co color covering your wires and then it's going to have the bubble color underneath there. This is, while I've got it out, um, 17 gauge high temp. So this is Kemper high temp wire. And on the back, 
it says 17 gauge. And you probably can just search for Kemper 17 gauge wire um, on, you know, different sites. But a lot of your um, glass suppliers should have it. Um, you can find it, I'm sure, on Amazon. There's all different places to get that. And Jenny will probably have it in the chat before I can even say that because she's so fast. In case you don't know and you're new, Jenny is my helper and she is remote. And she is feeding me the questions you guys are putting in the chat. And even though you guys can't hear her, she's I call her my voice in my head, which kind of sounds weird. Um, so she, and if she doesn't talk for a while and then she says something, she scares the daylights out of me. Because I'm not, because it's coming through the same speaker that I'm speaking into, and it's weird that you guys can't uh, hear her. Okay, so you see, I just flooded that in. Everything is puddling back together. So let's look at. Let me zoom in real quick, and uh, now watch how I'm putting it in. So I've scooped it up. I got a lot. See that dot of color? Start in the big area, then push it next to the line or into the corner next to a color whatever your area you're working on so don't start in that little tiny corner you want to be over there when you have less product on your brush so now i'm gently taking it over there the other half of the corner is done with teal and like i said the instructions are all on that blog page with the pattern and everything. It's a free pattern. You can also find it on the fall glass color kit page. It's at the bottom, which I'm sure a lot of people didn't even know it was there. So if you want the one for the spring and the winter, um, summer does not have one yet, but the other ones, they do have patterns out there for those seasons. Just look at the bottom of that kit page and you can download those. And we'll probably do the winter one um, like in December. Okay, so 332 and 357 were these corners. All right, any other questions? All right, John Phillips says he likes the bubble art. I do too. They're fun things to do. I should have had the chips over here so you guys could see them, but I did want to. Okay, we have a question. This is going to be full fused. So Jean, I think you might be a ceramic person if I remember correctly. So it would be like an 015, 016 type firing. It's going to, um, the firing schedule is listed. This one was going to 1420 with a 20 minute hold, but whatever your normal full fuse is with a good bubble squeeze, because we do have two pieces of glass, would be recommended. Okay, because everybody, how long does it take to dry is the question. Um, not a whole long time. I mean, you can see that was the first one I did, this, uh, the teal and purple leaf, and this one we just did. So this is almost dry. The inside of that is still wet. That one's very wet, like a water puddle wet. See the wetness of it there. So, Within 30 minutes, it depends. These larger areas are going to take longer because remember, your glass is solid, okay? There, there's nowhere for anything to absorb. So it's just sitting on the top until it dries. Hey, Blake. Blake was in my class in Alabama. How are you tonight? Um, you can buy some of the glass from Miss Nell at Craftworks Ceramics there in uh, Northport, Alabama. She should have some sheets she can cut to size. If she doesn't, then um, I will help her find those for you. You can also search for uh, warm glass near me in Google, and it'll come up with a, you know, there might be a stained glass shop that has also warm glass, meaning glass that is fusible. So Blake did a, um, Dragonfly stamped on glass. I turned out really great from what I seen from the pictures. Okay, so I'm going to leave this part alone. 
um, I would still need to come back and detail all my leaves when they're dry. What I'm going to do is switch over to this other one and show you the bubble art application. I'm going to move those out of the way. And I normally I would wait till this one is dry and I'd flip it over and do this on the back side. But because of time purposes, I'm going to do it on another piece. Okay. And Shelly took great step by step photos. So this is what you would see on the back. So she only applied the bubble art around the design. So you can see this is that. Oh, wait a minute. Let me zoom out. Sorry, I forgot that I wasn't. Okay. So this is the bubble art and this is bubble art. And that's what's behind in between here and here. Now you're saying, well, why didn't you go all the way across? Because it starts creating texture on those corners. Okay. And you don't want a bunch of bubbles, you know, moving the green leaves around either. So if you just follow her instructions, she's got patterns. You can see everything is there for you. Okay. So this, okay. And we've got some questions and this is the fall kit showing you exactly what you're getting in that kit. And it shows you also on the website. Yes. Question is, Great question. So after it's fired, could you uh, foil it and put it into a stained glass project? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. The bubble art colors, which this is plum. Okay. We got one more question. I, okay. The question is, am I painting on the same side that had the outline? Yes, I am. I can feel it there. Um, you're butting it up next to the color or to the outline. If you go over it, you can touch it up with the detailing black that I was showing earlier. Okay. Or the CC black. So you can touch up your lines. Uh, you just got to control how much product you're putting in an area. And I'll show you that as I'm going to do this bubble art um, right now. Yeah, so this would really be on the back side of that. I can't flip it over because my colors are wet. So I'm going to just show you the application on here. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and the PDF patterns, sometimes they're slightly smaller um, because my glass is cut to the size that the pattern was done for. So I just centered it around it and went for it. All right. Now, the bubble art colors have a tendency, they have like a little chunk in them and I'm going to show you let's see if I can find it in here this particular color it may not have it but if you find any granules that look like a brown do not they are supposed to be there let me look at the other color I didn't notice it in one of these there's a couple of the colors and these colors are not true to what they fire out either yeah, there's none in this one either. But don't take those. That's what causes the bubble action. Don't take those out, okay? If you see them, they're, they're supposed to be there. Um, one of the colors, let me see if I can grab it real quick, is um, Cerulean. Has a tendency to have some of them. One. All right, so let's see if we can find it. This is 5051. Of course not. Anyway, if they're there, just don't take them out is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. So this is um, plum. So it's like a purple. And it's going to be across the top. And we're only doing it. We're going to go around that leaf. We're not going to go underneath it. Okay. But we are going to go out to the corner. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to do this corner because I want this one is another color. And then I'm going to go out here on this one. So I didn't want to merge those two where they could uh, meet. Now, the other thing is a lot of times I'll thin the bubble art color down just a little bit more. This is really thin, uh, almost a 50, 50. Um, the thicker it is, sometimes the larger the bubbles are. And the other thing about bubble art is, like I said, you need to have it fused between glass. 
the time and temperature make the bubbles. So if you're working on float glass, which goes to a higher temperature, like 1550, 1570, or even on 90, I'm working on 96, um, the hotter you go and the more time you set at that top temperature, your bubbles can increase. So if you fire again, they could get larger if you fired a second time. So keep that in mind. Some of the colors, um, when you put them on top of float glass and you don't cap them, parchment is one. And I don't have an example to show you, but it looks like crackled glass on top. It does not create bubbles. It's really cool. I'm going around that leaf. See, I'm just scooping up. Can they see that or do I need to go closer? Maybe just a hair. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm asking Jenny questions and then I'm doing, I'm just doing it. <laughs> Was there a question? Okay. All right. So see how quick that's going? So if I put two little scoops side by side here, if they start to merge, did you see that close up? I don't know whether you can see that on. If they close up, then you know you've got the right consistency. If they just sit in a puddle, then they're too thick. And I'm not looking straight over the top of this, so I'm hoping that I'm along that line somewhere. I'm trying just to keep it, it, see how quickly. The bristles of my brush is not bending. I'm just moving, flooding and filling, moving that excess so that it's not too thick in an area. Some colors, the bubbles are bigger. Parchment, sapphire, navy are large bubbles and then some of the other ones are smaller and you can look at all those charts out there on the website okay see how quick that was pretty fast let me see if i've got that chart i think i do the bubbles back up real quick before i make a mess all right one second and i'll show you now remember, if you buy any of our glass products, and I'm gonna have to zoom back out, because so if you buy any of our glass color products, we have a closed group that's called CFE Glass Color Artist. You're gonna answer three questions, ask to join. A lot of people still don't know that that uh, Facebook page is available, dedicated only to our product, okay? All right, so. Hold on. Here's our. Mm -hmm. If you paint it on, if you paint it on too thick, the question is, can you fix it? Um, you can pull it out and kind of lift it off with your brush. You can kind of scoop it and put it back in, and just you know push out the color in that area. Um, white is the temperamental one. If you get the G302 white on too heavy, that can actually pull away from itself. Um, I did not mention, uh, but you clean your glass with white distilled vinegar and a lint-free cloth and make sure that you kind of buff it to get rid of any swipe marks. Um, you don't want to put your finger on your glass because uh, your oils from your body can get on that and cause the product to repel also. Okay, so here's the bubble art color. So these charts are available on the web. It shows you between, on top, and then design work. So all of these are nice and large on the website showing you all 16 colors and things that you can do with it. Okay, and then I do have a few uh, like DVDs and uh, downloadable projects also that have some of that in it. The Dragonfly Nightlight is one of the projects that shows you how to use it with frit as opposed to using it with a capped piece. All right, so this section down here, and I didn't mean to put water on there, uh, is going to be, uh, and I almost grabbed the same color, Aqua Splash. And I know it doesn't look like Aqua Splash when you're putting it on, it's brown. And that's why I said some of these colors, because of the bubble stuff, they're not a true to color like our regular enamels are. 
So don't let that freak you out. And some of these, there's like three of them that look the same. So make sure you keep your lids with everything because they're really, even I have a hard time uh, trying to keep them apart. So this is Aqua Bubble Art. Any other questions, Jenny? Okay, so you just come in and flood this one in the same way. And then after everything is dry, you don't want to put it in the kiln wet. You can fan dry, but what happens is it could start pulling apart and you get what I call a little um, pucker where the outside of your area is drier than what the inside, like the inside of this area is still wet and the outside is dry and it starts to um, leave like a little divot in it, which can be a thinned out space uh, when it's fired. So just keep in mind about that. If you can just let it dry overnight, that's best. Flip your piece over, look at it. You'll be able to tell on the back side if it's dry. Um, you'll be able to see that it's damp. And I'm going to try to, I see little chunks in this one, which is the bubble stuff. And I'll try to show you that when I'm done. But let me flip this over so you can see. Okay, see how the pumpkin whoops, looks still wet, except for around the edge. It's a darker orange, the lighter orange. So that tells you it's still wet in the middle. So if you flip your glass over and you see that, you would not want to fire that, even though you say, oh, I touched it and it's dry. It probably isn't dry. Well, it's not if you can see that wet look for sure. But see how I'm just quickly, a great big drop, and then I'm pushing and pulling, flooding that in. It goes pretty fast. And even if you go, if you go like that and you spread it out, as long as it moves back together and you don't see like a line like that where it's really thin, then it's the proper consistency. Any other questions? Okay. So hopefully you can find, you know, even if you don't want to do this, project, uh, maybe, you know, just the information to help you do some of your fall designs, sun catchers, um, jewelry. And like I said, it would be really pretty to like sift uh, maybe some cop copper sparkle over the top of the pumpkin when it's wet. That would be, oops, I just covered my leaf. Did you see that? Ah. Now, so what I'm going to, you were asking, how do you get it off? Somebody said something. So watch this. I'm going to just pull that back. So I clean my brush. And I'm going to move that back off of there. You can also take a Q-tip. And it's not going to hurt that there's a little bit there. But I just wanted to make sure you know how to get it off if you need to. I did that on purpose, right, Jenny? Yep. And I'm going to go around that leaf. See what happens when I talk and paint at the same time? Yep. Yeah. Don't forget um, to chat. Put something in the chat. Tell me where you're from or say something so that you uh, get in the drawings. And Jenny will spend the comments on YouTube and on Facebook because we're broadcasting live to both at the same time. And if you go to this page on the website, the video will be there. So you don't have to look for it. I think that's a key to a lot of these. Um, so I'm going to tilt this and see if you can. I don't know that you're going to be able to see it. There's like some little. See the little speckly look in there. Those are those little chunks I was talking about. So they're fine. You don't want to take those out. Okay, so we're going to pretend that that is on the back side of there. Okay, and then you would, when this dries, you're going to put your wire on top of your glass. Ah, I did. I put it on top. All right. You're going to put it on top of there, and then you will set this down. But you also want to sift over that whole piece. Okay. 
And the reason you're going to sift is because, especially like in the middle here, where there is nothing, because when this one sets down on it, think of your glass is another piece of glass on top of there. Like if you were doing stained glass and putting layers, okay, it weights it down. So we need to sift to make this even because we have bubble art in some areas and nothing in other areas. Okay, and that's going to look the same way on the back of here. And technically, I can just put this on top of there. I don't have to paint it on the back. If it's easier to do like I did tonight, that works too. Okay, so sift clear powdered frit, not fine, powdered over the whole thing. And then sift a little bit more in these areas that don't have anything. And around your edge one more time. What that does is raise the edge up so the center can fall and then it'll sit down and close on the very edge so that you've got a nice sealed edge. Now always check your edges if it's anything that went out to the edge and I just smeared that and make sure that you clean any color off of the edge of your glass because it will stay there. You can use a q-tip and seesaw it back and forth to remove anything. Um, that's what I do or take a paper towel in your finger and uh, just be careful that you don't cut yourself. So always check all your edges before you fuse, okay? All right, so I hope you guys like this. Um, if, you, if you do, tell me. And then Jenny is gonna spin uh, for prizes. All right, so let me move things out of the way here. And let me show you some of the bubble art real quick before I do that. So this is it's something that is white. I don't have anything. Let me grab this one. Okay, so that's some of the bubble arts. That's just bubble art only. So this is cerulean. This is like 32. And then two different greens, laurel and uh, uh, 62 and 64. So anyway, that's what the bubbles does between glass. Okay. And there was a video just recently on, on, on all of those. I did all the different flowers with all the different products. So check that out because that'll help you uh, definitely uh, maybe help you make a decision what you want to use on a project. Okay. Yep. I am going to switch back over. Hold on one second. Can you still hear me? Oh, there we go. Okay. Should be okay. All right. Hi guys. All right. So the first prize is um I'm not no, I got them in order. This is the floral paste dish. These are all class in a bags, I call them. So it's a technique sheet for glass. And it's the floral paste dish valued at $12.50. It has the detailed pattern, instructions, uh, step by step photos. And that one goes to Jenny is spinning. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Tell me again, Linda. Third Kilson. She's going to type it. <laughs> I'm sure I did too, killed it. So Jenny is putting, um, okay, I know who you're talking about now. Uh, she's putting it into the chat. So um, last live that we did two weeks ago, all three people did not send me their mailing address. They didn't get a hold of me, so no, nothing went out. So if you won two weeks ago, um, and I'd have to have Jenny read those off. It was Clay Dimensions. Um, who did that go to, Jenny? Mary Ann Troutner. So you won the Clay Dimensions last time. So you need to message me with your email address everything so that I can send that product to you if you want it. Uh, if she doesn't respond by next time we go live, then we're just going to put it back in the kitty for another drawing. Okay. All right. Then the next one is uh, diffused bubble art and more. And this is a technique sheet that has flowers, leaves. It's got jewelry. It's got a tray. It's valued at $14.50. And who wins that, Jenny? Wendy Morowicz. Okay. 
Wendy Morowick. So if you won tonight, don't forget to message me on Facebook. Send me all your shipping information. Okay. Paula, I have a project in the kiln we are talking about. I'll show you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Jen's going to show us a project tomorrow. So, all right. So Jenny has put that one in the chat. So if you're a winner, make sure, Wendy, make sure you get my, your information to me if I don't have it. Or just message me and say, I've ordered, you've got it. Okay. The next one is the dragonfly bowls. It has two different bowls. Actually, the bowl is behind me over there somewhere right there. So it's for, for that. <laughs> I know it's the it's reverse. It's a virtual background, guys. Um, so that pat, pattern pack is valued at $24.95. There is video tutorials that you can purchase if you want the videos to help you through that project also. That's out there. Hey, Miss Gracie. Okay. Melissa Souza gets the dragonfly glass bowl class in a bag. Okay. Melissa Souza. And I that doesn't sound familiar. So you're new to me, I think, Melissa. Oh, she's on YouTube. Okay. So make sure you um, go to Facebook and message me, or you can send me an email and Jenny can type that in for you. Info at colorsforearth.com. Um, actually, I think I can put that on the screen. Maybe we'll see. Uh, okay. So just make sure you get all of that to me. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you right now. So there's the website and there's my email and phone number if you need it. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed this fall project. I'd like to see some things that you do with it. Like I said, you can, you know, rearrange the pattern, use the same colors. And uh, this was from the fall kit that we were working from tonight with some extra, the outlines and the detailing. Okay. All right. I will get this fired up and probably give it away at the next live. We will not be live next week. Right, Jenny? We're going the following week. And we will do ceramics that week or brushes, I, brush strokes. I'm not sure which one I'll do. Um, whatever kind of comes to me. And I think about it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Blake. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. The people that are new, this is definitely, you know, would be a, an easy project to do um, for a beginner. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good evening. I'll see you in two weeks. And don't work too hard and stay safe out there. Thank you for joining me. Take care. And I just got a network error. I think we're still live. I'm going to refresh because I don't think it'll let me disconnect unless I do. So hang on. <laughs>